Okay, we're ready to size our chain. We've got the master link on the chain. We want to go ahead and take that off. I use a pair of needle nose pliers. You've got the open end of the master link and you've got the pin that goes through the chain here on your master link. I put one end of my needle nose against the pin, the other end against the, uh, the, the clip on the master link. That pops it forward. Pull it off. Pull off the plate. The rest of the connecting link. Okay, what you're going to want to do is pull your chain and get your chain just started on the sprocket. Then you're going to need to get your spark plug tool that came with your kit. It, it will fit this nut and we're going to turn the sprocket and feed the chain around to about here. Then we can size it up. Make sure your spark plug is removed because if you have compression on it, your, your motor is not going to turn freely. Your spark plug tool will fit tightly against that nut. I use a Phillips. It's kind of a four-handed operation, but we do the best we can. Put your chain in it. Then I'm going to hold it with this finger here and turn it. Okay, you can get your finger caught in here, and it's going to hurt. So be very careful. Keep your finger only on the side. We're going to slowly turn it. You want to be careful that your chain doesn't strike your chain doesn't strike the case, that'll bind there and it'll bind on this little mount here, but you keep your finger holding it in, slowly turn it, here you want to pull the, the chain down, guide your chain through, and get about one, two, three, four, five, about six links out. Pull your chain underneath and bring it together. Okay, so I've got some links to remove. The master link is going to take place of one of the links that has the, the larger face here, not the inner link here. I'm going to cut the chain, break the chain right here. When I put my master link in, it'll be at this length here. I will have my, my chain tensioner here, which will take up the slack. This will give me a satisfactory fit. So I'm going to bend the link over, the links over here. And right here is where I'm going to break it. So I'm going to hold it here. Now I've got to remove the chain from here. Turning it backwards. Nice and slow. Be careful not to get the chain bunched up here. Okay, I've got the link here where I've ground it off. I have a pin, a pin punch, which is a slightly smaller diameter than the pin I want to punch out. What I'm going to do is either, I, you, if, you can, if you have a hole in your table, you can rest the pin because we have to drive that pin out. And, that, and if you have it against the table, a flat surface, it's going to keep it from going in. So what I do is I take a nut put it under the pin, get my pin punch centered, and give her some love taps and you want to make sure your your pin punch is centered directly over the pin that's in there. It's kind of hard to see but you can see it. Okay, I've 
got it through now. I can see my, my pen is coming out. I've got a hole in the table. It's going to give me a little extra room for the pen to drop out. Okay, it's out. I now have my chain broken. Okay, let's go ahead and get the chain on the sprocket. Remember, there's a lot of pinch points there, so be careful not to get your finger pinched. Hold it up against the sprocket here now that you're kind of out of the clear. Into the clear here, go ahead and pull your chain down a little bit. Make sure it doesn't get caught on the, uh, the, the this part of the case here. Your connecting link, you need the rounded part, that is the, the, the closed part of your clip here to be pointing in the direction of travel. So the wheel is going to be rotating this way here. So our direction of travel on the chain is going to be counterclockwise. When we mount our chain tensioner against the chain stay, the chain will be there. One thing we're going to need to look for is once we get our chain tensioner on, we want to make sure that the chain doesn't rub against the frame, because if it rubs against the frame, it'll ultimately cut the frame, and that we don't want that to happen. I don't think we're going to have a problem with this one. Let's go ahead and get our chain tensioner and get our chain tensioner on. Okay, we've got our chain tensioner here. Your ta chain tensioner is going to bolt onto the chain stay. Here, you have an adjustment. Here, let's go ahead and fit it in. We're going to put the chain over it. Then let's go ahead and put our bolts in. We've got the bolt, a flat washer, a lock washer, and a hex nut. Okay, I've got the chain taut. Your pedal chain is taut. I've got the wheel straight in the frame. I'm going to double check. The wheel is straight in the frame. We don't have any rubbing against the tire and we don't have any rubbing against the chain stay. You want to make sure that your chain is not going to be striking the brake arm or your screw that goes in to hold the brake arm to the clamp. We look good there. So what we want to do, we want to make sure that our, our adjustment here is pretty much all the way down. Then we, we want to push this back and that's going to push up and give some tension on the chain. I've got just a little bit of slack in the chain and that is fine. Let's go ahead and tighten our bolts up here, get them hand tight. Okay, right now, this wheel here is riding against the bolt there. So I'm going to move the arm forward a little bit. That's going to allow me to move the idler up. On the, the back side here, the wheel was, was rubbing against the, the head of the bolt. Let's go ahead and turn this just a little bit to hold it into position. I've got the, just a little bit of slack in the chain. That's fine for right now. Let's go ahead and tighten this up. This here is a 14 millimeter. You want about the same amount of gap on the top as you have on the bottom when you get it fully tightened up. Okay, you want to make sure that you are not pulling your chain in or pulling your chain out or pushing it in. You want your chain running in a straight line from your sprocket in the front 
from your sprocket in the front to your sprocket in the back. So you don't want to be pulling or pushing your chain. You want to make sure that your wheel is flat against the chain. If, if this here is pulled out, number one, that's going to be pulling your chain out, but you're not going to get a good even ride on the chain on the wheel. But we look to be in good shape there. Let's go ahead and pull the chain up. I've got that fairly taut. Right now I'm just going to put my finger, there's a, a, a screw here that a flat blade screwdriver can fit in. I'm just going to put my finger on it and slowly tighten this up the best I can. Now let's go ahead and uh, get this snugged up. I'm going to push my flat blade screwdriver in from the other side holding the screw. Let's go ahead and turn the wheel. I can see that the white nylon, the uh, the idler wheel is, is rotating freely. It's not binding against anything. My chain is good and tight. It's not rubbing against the wheel and it's not rubbing against the frame. It loosened up a little bit so let's go ahead. That's not bad. That little bit of play there is fine. You don't want any more than that. It is going to stretch when you ride it a little bit, so you want to make sure that you come back and periodically check your chain and keep your chain tight. Okay, we're ready to go ahead and put our, uh, our sprocket case, uh, the cover on with the clutch arm. Make sure that this piece here has not come out, this metal pin here that has to be in there. It's got a little dab of grease on it. Okay, your clutch arm needs to be somewhat out a little bit. You don't, you're not going to try to put it in with it facing in towards the motor. Have it at least facing out to the back and out a little bit. That way you're, this here is going to be actuating that rod. This arm here turns, it presses on the rod, that, that disengages the clutch. Start with the longest screw first, that goes in the upper back one. As well, the reason why this one's so long, it comes through the back, and this is where you can mount the chain guard on if you wish to have a chain guard. Okay, once again, you want to get these good and tight, but not too tight. These screw heads are, are kind of soft, so don't strip them. All right, let's go ahead and get the carburetor mounted.